No, I'm not. You know, it's not just an incident. This is a pattern of behavior, and police tend to walk away, uh, even when they face juries, to sympathize with the killer, not with the, not with the murder of the victims of terror. Uh, it is Amadou Diallo in New York shot 41 times in the back unarmed by police. It's uh, uh, Abner Louima drugged and directed him to nearly bled to death by police inside the police headquarters. It's Oscar Grant in Oakland, California. Uh, it's Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. And there needs to be some kind of commitment by our government to afford Americans equal protection and stop the, these acts of terror. Do you believe that if it was a white man running away, they would not have been shot in this way? Wouldn't have been shot in any way. There's no evidence of it. And as a matter of fact, if a white man had been shot, whites would be protesting. To be morally consistent, we should all black and white alike protest against the immorality of it, against the inconsistent, against the meanness of it. Invariably, these white police who kill black men walk away free, and we deserve better. Of course, we haven't had a trial. The uh, police officer has just been charged uh, at this stage. Uh, but how do you believe a, well, that, a that's trial the point. can... When, when, they, when they are trying... Well, well we hope there is a trial, but if, uh, what we find in, in Britain is that the juries tend to set the killers free. Whether it was Emmett Till or Matt Gibbs, whether it was uh, uh, the, uh, Trayvon Martin, or whether it is Diallo... Uh, in New York, or what it is, uh, Michael Brown and Ferguson, that tends to be a kind of uh, uh, setting, setting them free, which, is, uh, which compounds the, the agony of it all. And Can you imagine you think- a man being shot eight times and then being hand- handcuffed while bleeding to death? Do you think this should be a, a, a death penalty case? Well, it, it should be according to, it, They'll have to change state law. If this is not death penalty, it could change death penalty law. Because by any, any standard of the law as it is, he would face the death penalty. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not for the death penalty. Uh, I, I don't think it solves anything. I, I would prefer life without parole. But if he does not get the death penalty, they can take it off the books. The point is often made by uh, people after these incidents that, in fact, it's black-on-black crime which claims many more lives, uh, killings uh, in, in that area. What is your response to that? My response is, is basically in South Carolina, it's 25 percent African American, 75 percent of, of the prisoners are African American. They do prison labor. They make products. They're in prison for profits. The whole criminal justice system blacks get more time for the same crime. So when something happens that is as uh, as blatant as being shot in the back eight times, it captures our attention. But you go to South Carolina's prisons and then look at the prison labor force. But this, this whole season of killing is not unlike when we came out of slavery in 1865 after 246 years in slavery, that they unleashed us, they unleashed us to the hands of the former slave masters. There were more than 4,000 lynchings of black men between 1880 and 1950. 4,000 plus lynchings at the church on Sunday and at courthouses. Why do you think this is happening now in 2015? I'm not sure that the reaction often is based upon ignorance and fear, hatred and violence. President Barack has offered great leadership showing America how to live together. When you go to these ball games on the weekend, we, we play ball together and, and, and we learn to live together in, in that context. Because whenever the playing field is even and the rules are fair and the goals are clear, we do quite well. But when the field is uneven, whites are insecure and seem to gain some advantage, some social and, and some sick psychic gratification of killing black people. And we must, we cannot stop them from wanting to do it, but the law, the law must be a deterrent. Would uh, getting more black people to join uh, the police forces, would that be one solution? Well, that, tends, that tend, would tend to, to balance out more, more blacks and more Latinos and more women would tend to make it a, a better police force. But even that, they have to be better trained and made more sensitive because whether you're black or white, somehow the, the, ba- the badge and the gun affects people's sense of, of all power, and, they don't, and their power is not all, it's limited power. And their job is to protect and serve, not to be judge and jury and kill people. So what do you believe that it's the authorities... Embar- it's, 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 an interna- it's an international embarrassment for the whole world is watching. And what do you believe that the authorities, politicians in America can do now uh, to stop these sort of incidents happening again? 
Well, the protests against the killings of black whites must join the march. Uh, make this a moral issue, not just a racial issue. I mean, it is immoral uh, for whites to kill blacks, blacks to kill whites. No one should kill anybody. But it seems to be as if we have the burden of proof when we're beaten and killed, even on camera. We can be on camera and with a jury and still the killers walk free. That is what is so disheartening about the whole proposition. This is state execution. This is as an act of terrorism. Must be dealt with as we would deal with any terrorist. Reverend Jackson, thank you for joining us from Chicago. Thank you.